Greetings, witches, wizards, and magicians. My name is Magic Maestro. In this video, we are breaking down the first part of the second Hogwarts Legacy Gameplay Showcase. If you haven't seen the breakdown of the first Gameplay Showcase, I have one on the channel, and I encourage you to go check it out first. In this video, we're going to be discussing 87 things I noticed from the showcase. Let's begin. Ben Snow was the community guest host for the Gameplay Showcase. Alan Tu is the game director for Hogwarts Legacy. Chandler Wood is the community manager, and you can follow him at Finch Strife on Twitter. Mackenzie Toner is a system designer for the project. The showcase covered flight and the open world, combat, and the room of requirement. We're going to break down flight and the open world in this video. In the first shot, we see that we have a new student avatar from the last showcase. This time, the student isn't wearing school robes. You'll be able to acquire many outfits in the game. The astronomical clock displays the positions of heavenly bodies, aka objects in the sky. Judging by the position of the 24-hour hand, it looks like it may be about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. This tower here is in need of the Reparo spell. You can see windows of the Hufflepuff common rooms. They're totally like hobbit homes. I love that. Also, badgers live in shallow burrows, so it's perfect. The character is equipped with four spells. Leviosa, Accio, Incendio, and the last one I'm not sure about, but I think it's Expelliarmus. I'm fairly confident this is the train bridge from the Hogwarts Express traveling to Hogsmeade Station, and back to London. The yellow quest symbol here, I thought it was for story missions, but it looks like out in the open world, it might be for broom racing. The first gameplay showcase shows off quest givers as being silver on the minimap. The four symbols at the bottom right corner show which of the four spell loadouts you have active. You can rotate between 16 spells while in combat. An unspecified button mounts the broom. The broom can be aesthetically altered for the look you want from the broom shop. The broom can also be upgraded. The yellow bar is your boost meter. The boost meter lets you fly higher in the air and faster. Hagrid's hut is in the game with its small garden, just like in the movies. It looks like some sheep and chickens are running around and Hagrid's hut has a revealio page. The symbol on the minimap looks kind of like a cave or secret passage. Flying over this area, the character says, I should investigate. Yes, you should investigate, please stop. This boardwalk serves as a shortcut and leads to a boat dock. There's a quest giver here, probably at the end of the boat dock. This flame symbol, it's gray because it has not been activated yet. It will become a fast travel point. This magnifying glass symbol, or chat bubble symbol here. We need to inspect something on the ground, or someone stands on that soapbox and starts running their mouth. Chess symbols on the minimap show off potential loot. It's not stealing if I just look, right? There's a broken down cart or some wreckage here in the shallow water. It looks like we'll be able to walk out to it, but can we get more than our ankles wet? I'm liking the green roofs. It's very modern, guys. Oh no, you know what this is, right? Yeah, it's a potion vendor. That's disgusting. They ought to be ashamed selling potions to kids outside of a school. How has the headmaster not heard about this? They should send this guy away to Azkaban. All right, so this is a good spot to talk about the game engine. In a previous video, I thought that Hogwarts Legacy might be running in Unreal Engine 5.1. I thought this because there was light coming through the leaves which is one of the latest updates. However, I've seen some game developers come up with interesting ways to create translucency with leaves. Now, I can't explain how they do it. There's a reason why I gave up trying to become a programmer. There's an interactive object on the ground here. I'm not sure what it is. I don't know if I can make a guess either, but maybe it's a plant? There's a dragon skeleton on the ground here that is also a revealio page. Perhaps it was 
the victim of a battle long ago? We see the leaf symbol here, which means there is a puzzle to solve. We will see a lot more of these throughout the rest of the showcase. There are some wild animals running around here. They resemble wolves. They can't be wolves though, because wild wolves were killed off in the 1600s in Scotland. We can get a sense for how these puzzles will work by taking a look back at the concept artwork. There is a broom shop in Hogsmeade that sells various brooms. They have the same stats though. If you complete a quest for the shopkeep, however, he will sell you broom upgrades. There's a murder of crows here by this hut. We can hear them too. Who would want to live in this hut? There's giant holes in the roof. Clearly someone stays here because there's smoke in the chimney. I especially love the branches decorating the roof. I had a neighbor down the street with a tree growing out of his second floor window. There are a number of game feats. There are different challenges to encourage playstyle variety and introduce new techniques to players. It's nice to see some tree stumps. I mean, these broomsticks aren't made from plastic. I just got my eye exam and I still can't make out what's on these signs except for Hogwarts. There's also caution trolls. Do they mean trolls, trolls, or internet trolls? This bridge reminds me of one from the showcase trailer. It's also broken down. The Ministry of Magic needs to get to work on whatever it is that they do. Broom upgrades increase the height we can fly above the ground. As you fly up, the broom boost meter depletes. There's a stone symbol inside an upside down triangle that might be for graveyards? Right, there's something angry down there. At first I thought these were kilns or bird boxes? Now I'm pretty confident that they are straw skeps or beekeeper hives. This cave symbol is over these rocks in the water. Perhaps this is an old dam or bridge. The more I think about it, the more I want to say that this actually might be a ruin symbol. The symbol reminds me of the arches from the ASMR fall video. Maybe we can use Reparo on these places to earn rewards. This looks like the bar and patio location from the summer ASMR video. We should name it because we don't know its official name yet. Let's call it Hog's Desire. Well, if they had water on the outside of the boat, maybe it would float. Whoever lives in this house is going to break their neck on these roots. The maestro in this hamlet here is playing music for some youngsters. A hamlet is smaller than a town or village. Having homes here makes it easier for these fields to be tended, rather than having someone have to travel back and forth to Hogsmeade. That instrument looks like a French horn, but that is not a French horn. You can tip the musician 10 galleons? You must be a music connoisseur. The musician says, I could use some gold. Well, I could use a million dollars. That's life. Is that a fire crab on the dock? What is that multicolored thing there? That's certainly a mystery. Man, I feel like I'm taking an eye exam trying to read the letters on the bottom row. Brockborough, Lower Hogsfield, Graveyard, Aaronshire, Hogsmead, Iron something, Danger, Butterbeer, Hogwarts. Whew. Hey, I noticed the magic door locks this time. I hope these are better than the Jurassic Park door locks. Merlin's beard! What in the name of Dumbledore's purple robes is that? It's some magical artifact with three green dots on each side. It must be like the three seashells. You either get it or you don't. Alan too tells us that the open world allows us to explore and learn about our ancient magic. Enemies, poachers, and dark wizards out in the open world carry valuable resources. Grab your boots and wands, we're going to dark wizard hunting, yeah! As we approach this scene, we see the chairs are highlighted in white. This must mean that we can take a seat. I know I'm not the only one that's going to be doing that. This is the moment of the showcase where we learn that it's never a good idea to drink from cups that aren't yours. Also, don't drink bar mat shots. You never know what's in those. We can see that whoever harvested the straw for this structure's roof did not run it through a thresher. That would have prevented little seeds from being left behind. 
You can see here that the seeds germinated and started sprouting on the roof. Also, I'm not entirely sure I want to know what these three finger looking things are if they are anything other than ginger roots. Ginger ale was invented in Ireland in the 1850s, so let's hope it's ginger roots. Mounts are stored in your creature case. The onyx black hippogriff is a half eagle, half horse magical creature. This color variation is a pre-order bonus. Hippogriffs can be used as both land mount and as a flying mount. Resources here can be mined to use in potions. Here we get a look at some grazing highland cattle. And now we have to ask the important question. Can giant spiders eat highland cattle? This giant spider is called a thornback, and it's a scorier, which means it's a scout. Spiders. Why couldn't it be followed the butterflies? Train tracks for the Hogwarts Express. The only mass transit transportation for children to and fro Hogwarts. The Hogwarts Express was constructed in 1827 at the suggestion of Adeline Hamble, Minister of Magic, and completed in 1830. I'm noticing a lot of objects popping into the game in the distance. This is a hallmark of Unreal Engine 4. It's a way to save system resources, but it can be distracting. Level 18 enemies. We get a name for these evil or violent goblins with axes. They're called Loyalist Assassins. I'm assuming they're loyal to Ranrock. I'm guessing that they have an axe to grind with the Ministry of Magic. Axe to grind? You, you see what I did there. A question mark symbol rests above the heads of these enemies. It fills up over time. It could be learning about their weaknesses the longer our character stays close to them. I'm not sure. A dueling feat pops up on the right side of the screen. In this case, it's specific to enemy type, or at least takes enemy type into account when prompting. The question mark symbol turns from gray to yellow, and from yellow to red, and turns into an exclamation point. Perhaps it's an aggression or aggro meter? In the upper left corner of the screen, we get a combat tip stating, the tool wheel can be activated by pressing L1. This brings up combat plants and potions that can be used during combat. I hope you can turn these tips off and on. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to. Here we can see there's a puzzle with three pillars all with diamond shaped recesses. Maybe we need to find some stones to go on these cutouts. And there's some runes nearby. Uh, environmental effects can change based solely on location. In this swampy area, we see dense fog and less sunlight, even though the time of day hasn't changed. We spot an enemy dug bog. These are giant frogs with trees on their backs. We got a first glimpse of them, I believe, during the Sony State of Play trailer. When the feat says to lift a dug bog by the tongue, I'm guessing it's just being cheeky. I don't think it's like in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, where you can cut off an Ogdo's tongue. There's a new symbol here on the minimap that looks like a maze. Below the player, we see double arches and a wood boardwalk. Where is the maze? Maybe it only appears once you walk through the archway. According to Alan 2, after reaching an early point in the story, the world opens up. Players can travel almost anywhere, although some areas are going to be more challenging. I didn't realize Scotland had fireflies. Apparently, there are two native species of glowworms. There's an old ruined hut off to the side, hidden in the fog. Some old hermit used to live out here. I wonder if his name's Ben. There's a footprint on the minimap, which makes me think this might be an area to search for a magical beast. The shape looks suspicious, but I can't make anything out. There's also another graveyard symbol. This fog makes it really hard to see things. It looks like there's enemies in the water. I really want to know about water, can't you tell? This giant windmill has a Revealio page. There are windmills in the Harry Potter Lego game. Before electricity, windmills were used to grind grain, pump water, or to cut wood. I'm guessing this one was used to cut wood. Next to the wood hut is a treasure chest symbol on the map. There's an interesting structure in the distance. I think it's a water wheel. And it looks like there's a racing challenge due to the yellow symbol on the mini map. Here we can catch a glimpse of a ruin symbol and a puzzle on the mini-map. It looks like there is a large body of water out in the distance. Perhaps this is the ocean? It looks like there is a stronghold in the distance. And there's a quest giver down below. 
Let's take a look here. There are ruins out there with a potential puzzle area. Those are weird shapes. It's either robots that look like tables or tables that look like robots. I'm betting someone knows what this is and I'm just a crazy old man losing his grip on reality. Looks like this is a platform that broom races start at. Now the world has been covered in snow. Here we get a glimpse at what happens to the open world when the seasons change. There are highland cows now grazing below. I didn't notice them before. You can no longer see the shoreline. It looks almost like a different game. The water wheel is still moving, so the river's not frozen over. Uh, the balloon race has moved somewhere else. I mean, who wants to race in a blizzard? Robes are horribly drafty. The camera here caught a flash of color. Perhaps this is a magical creature? But it's too far away to make out. There's some orange on the ground. What could have caused that? We don't get a good look, unfortunately. The color glimpsed here might be the top of a guidepost or lantern. There's a ritual going on down there. Those are some large torches or candles. Sabrina, what did I tell you kids about practicing witchcraft out in the woods? Here we get a close-up of the stronghold from before. The castle towers look like giant screws with threads circling up the sides. It might be goblin made. Alert! Alert! Ancient magic logo on the mini-map. This is one of those places Alan 2 said we could learn and expand our ancient magic. Can we just take a detour for a minute? No? Okay. Here we get another look at the graveyard symbol on the mini-map. You know, I'm really curious about their choice of logo. This doesn't look like any headstone I've seen before. Maybe it's... Actually, this pile of rocks we need. Aw oh, man, we need ingredients from a gravestone? Why didn't IGN write about that? Here are more dug bogs. I think, but we can't see them, so they may be hiding in the shallows. Also, I know there was a magical creature symbol on the mini-map, but no luck seeing one of those either. Two no-shows and one sick triceratops. We see that some of the dueling challenges require the use of potions and plants. In this case, it calls for the use of Chinese chomping cabbages, which we saw in Sony's State of Play trailer. We finally get a good look at a dug bog here, despite the world being desaturated. This is pretty cool. We see a skull symbol on the mini-map, and it looks like there are some dark wizards camping out here. Uh, let's not fly too close, please. Hey, look! You can see an enemy in the water! Okay, I'm done talking about water. I know, it's like Avatar The Way of Water up in here. Do you see the white outline around the plant? That means that this is likely going to be one of the ingredients that we can harvest out in the wild. We've already seen jumping mushrooms and magic mushrooms. According to Alan 2, a few items can be collected or interacted with only during certain times of day. Also, there will be less NPCs walking around at nighttime. So here we have some ruins and more of those anachronistic wolves. Oh wait, they're called mongrels. Okay, that makes total sense. I mean, that means they're actually dogs. We see that the feet here says to stop a beast from charging. It seems that beasts will attempt to knock you down to stun you since they can't cast stupefy. We've seen trolls charge and knock the player down before. Also, the feet mentions using the pulso. We've seen the pulso used at the end of the first showcase. Here we have another leaf puzzle. We see three vine wrap posts in a crate. Sounds like the start of an interesting story. I was right. And not just because I cheated and looked ahead. There is a quest giver at the end of the dock. See? You thought I was going to mention water again, didn't you? Merlin's beer! That was fun. Of course, I still have a million questions like, can you talk to every NPC? It doesn't seem like it. Will regular NPCs react if you go into battle? Can you target NPCs and cast spells on them? Can you swim? In my next video, I'll be breaking down the Dark Arts Battle Arena. Part 2 of the second gameplay showcase. Make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell to be notified when the breakdown drops. Thank you for watching. I hope you were entertained. Are you not entertained? Easy there, Spartacus. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius. Yeah, we definitely got sidetracked here. Apologies. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a magical day. Wizard out.